everyone, this is Sarah, and welcome to my crochet channel. Now today's video, we're going to be making a luminary jar cozy, and I've made it with this nice open shell work so that the light can come through. And we're going to be using these LED candles, so they're super safe for the kids and you, and if you forget to turn it off, you're not going to burn your house down. And these are super easy and super inexpensive. And we'll talk more about that later. The free crochet pattern is on my blog and you can find that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So what you're going to need to make the Luminary Jar Cozy is of course a jar. And these are the Kerr Mason jars. You can use any brand, 16 ounce style with the small opening. Now, I purchased some also at Michael's. You can find them at any of your stores like Walmart, but you can also find these at thrift stores. So you might swing by your local thrift store and see if they have any and ask around. There's a lot of people who do canning that might have a few cans left over. The type of candle that we're going to use is called an LED candle. And you can purchase these at the Dollar Tree and you can get two in a package so you can make four or six very inexpensively you get two candles in one package so you're getting two for a dollar so it's a really good bargain now I don't know how long the battery lasts but it does come with the battery already in it all right let's talk yarn now you can use any yarn that you want you can use cotton you can use worsted weight number four acrylic I do recommend a medium number four weight yarn and you can see I've made them in all different harvest and Halloween colors here's green and orange golden brown here's one that's purple and green I call this my witch one because I think it reminds me of a witch with the purple and green and then of course the traditional orange and it's a great way to use up a lot of your scrap yarns now even though I've made these in fall colors you could make these in Christmas colors and put them in your window at Christmas as well. And you can make them any colors that you want. They're great for setting out in the backyard, in your patio, for a party even. So just take your worsted weight number four or your medium weight number four cotton and just whip up a bunch of them. They're perfect for lots of occasions. We're going to be stitching today with our eye hook. And this eye hook is a 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. If your eye hook is smaller or bigger, because some of the crochet hooks have changed their measurements, just make sure that the jar cozy will fit your jar. So you're gonna have to probably measure as you go if your crochet hook is a different size. You're also going to need a needle for weaving in your ends, and of course, a pair of scissors. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be making the body of the cozy in this gold color. And I'm going to make the trim in the orange. These are both Red Heart Super Saver acrylic yarns. And I really myself prefer the acrylic yarns for this project. Just because they have a little bit more stretch to them than the cotton. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to be stitching from the bottom and then working our way up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our slip knot and chain five. We're going to join that into a circle. So put the tail of yarn over your hook and pull it through the loop. And just snug that down. And then we'll make that little stay knot that keeps our chain five loop securely tied. All right, we're going to put our hook through, pull up a loop, and chain three. There we go. Now we're going to chain 11 more double crochets in this chain five loop. Our chain three be, uh, that we began with counted as our first double crochet, and so we're double crocheting 11 more so that we have 12 double crochets. Do 
yarn over, go in the chain five space, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two loops. And if you'll notice, I'm stitching over that tail of yarn that we began with. And that's so when I'm done, I can pull that and close that hole. There we go. All right, let's count how many I've got. Here's my chain three, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need two more because I want 12 double crochets. All right, now I'm going to join to the top of this chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Okay, I'm going to turn this over and I'm just going to gently pull on that and you'll notice that hole closes. And we can come back in and weave that in later, but I wanted you to see how the hole will close up. And that's our first row. For row two, we're going to be stitching two double crochets in each of the 12 double crochets around. Now our chain three counts as our first double crochet. We're gonna stitch a double crochet right in the same stitch as our chain three. And then we're going to place two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. And this is going to take us from 12 double crochets to 24. Two double crochets in each of the double crochets around, and then we'll join to our chain three like we did for row one. I've stitched my 24 double crochets around. I'm going to join to the top of that chain three. And we're going to chain one. Now for row three, we're just simply going to place a single crochet in each of the 24 double crochets. So we'll go right in that first stitch and stitch a single crochet. Go in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both loops. That's our single crochet. So we're just going to place one single crochet in each of the double crochets around. So again, we'll have 24 stitches. I have stitched my 24 single crochets around. All right, now we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. We're not joining to the chain one. If we join to the chain one, it would give us an extra stitch and we don't want that. So we're gonna go right in that first single crochet and stitch a slip stitch. And then we're going to chain three. All right, now we're going to begin the shell stitches with the open work so that the light can come through. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch two double crochets in the same stitch as our chain three. Our chain three here again counts as our first double crochet. And then we stitch two more in that same stitch for a shell stitch. We're going to skip the next stitch and then stitch one double crochet in the next stitch. All right, now we're going to skip the next stitch and stitch three double crochets in the next. And this is the way that this will work around. 
We'll skip the next and stitch one double crochet in the next stitch. Then we'll skip the next stitch and stitch three double crochets. See how that looks? Three, skip one, one, skip one, three. Now we're going to skip one and stitch one. Now we're going to skip one and stitch three in the next. And then we'll repeat this all the way around and join to our chain three. Skip. Here's our last double crochet. Then we'll join to the top of our chain three. Whoopsie, get in there. <laughs> there we go. Oh, missed it. <laughs> there we go. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going, we, we joined with a slip stitch to our chain three. Then we're going to slip stitch in the next double crochet and chain three. And what this does by slip stitching in that next stitch is it puts us in the center of that shell stitch. All right, and that's the way that this row should look. You should have six shell stitches and six individual double crochet stitches around. Okay, let's do row five. Well, our chain three counts as our first double crochet. So we're going to stitch two more double crochets in that center double crochet of that first shell stitch. Now we're going to do what's called a front post double crochet. Yarn over, we're going to go around the post of that double crochet and stitch our double crochet. Then we're going to go to the center double crochet of the next shell stitch. And we stitch three double crochets. And by stitching the front post on our single double crochets is what gives us this row here that stands up and just gives us a little extra texture and it looks really pretty too. All right, so let's do this row, front post, double crochet, on the single double crochet, and then three double crochets in the center double crochet of the shell stitch. Front post, double crochet and then three double crochets, the center double crochet of the next shell stitch. All right, we'll complete this on around. I completed row five all the way around, stitching a shell stitch in the center double crochet of the shell stitches and a front post double crochet over this individual double crochets. All right, so here's my last one. And we're going to do what we did on the previous row. We're going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch, and then we're going to slip stitch in the next double crochet. And again, that gets us to the center double crochet of the first shell stitch. All right, now, so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat row five for row six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. 
So we have two. We need to repeat five more rows of the same thing. So three double crochets and our chain three counts is our first one on this one. Front post double crochet around the front post double crochet and then three double crochets in the center double crochet of our next shell stitch. And repeat. Front post double crochet around the front post double crochet stitch and three double crochets in the center double crochet of the next shell stitch. And so we're going to be repeating row five for five more rows, which will get us up through row 10. I've completed my five additional rows so that I have a total of seven rows of the shells with the front post double crochets in between. We're going to join to the chain three. There we go. And then we'll slip stitch back to the center of that first shell. I've already cut my yarn. And I'm going to bring in my orange because I'm going to do my trim in this nice bright orange. Now, if you want to leave your yarn the same color, just slip stitch to that center double crochet and you're fine. All right. So we're going to go ahead and slip a single crochet in that center double crochet and chain one. Now we're going to go to the individual double crochet, stitch a single crochet chain one. We chained one and now we're going to go to the center double crochet of our next shell stitch and single crochet then chain one and then we'll repeat this all the way around. Single crochet in the double crochet chain one. Single crochet in the center double crochet of the next shell and chain one. And we'll repeat this all the way around and you'll notice that the top of it will come in just a little bit and I like to do that this way on this particular pattern so that it brings the neck of the luminary in just a little bit and helps it fit the jar just a little bit better. All right so we're almost around chain one, single crochet in that center double crochet of the next shell, chain one, double crochet or single crochet in the double crochet and chain one. All right so now we're back around and we're going to go right to that single crochet and stitch a slip stitch and chain one and you can see it brought in the neck of it just a little bit. All right now for this row we're going to put a single crochet in the single crochet and then we're going to put a single crochet in that chain one. Single crochet in the single crochet and then a single crochet in that chain one space. And that's the way we'll do this all the way around. So I completed that row of single crochet and again you can see it brings it in just a little bit. We're going to join to the top of that first single crochet and now we're just going to do a fun little trim. So we're going to chain three, there we go. We're going to skip the next stitch and slip stitch in the next. Chain three, one, two, three, 
skip the next stitch and slip stitch in the next. And this is just going to give it a nice little ruffle on the edge. Just makes it a little bit pretty, I think. See, just a nice little ruffle. Dress it up a little bit. <laughs> All right, two, three. Skip one and slip stitch in the next stitch. Just working all the way around the top edge of our luminary koozie. And then once you've finished your trim going all the way around, we're just going to slip stitch in that last stitch and tie off. We'll pull that loop to the inside. There we go. All right, then we'll have to weave those ends in with our needle later. But what I want to show you is here's my jar that I'm going to use. And this is a plastic jar that I picked up at Michael's. And Joanne's and Michael's both have the, class, the plastic jars. Now you want it to be a little bit tight getting on, okay? And then just slide it on. Here's our candle. Now, two things, you can either leave the lid off so that it can shine up bright, or you can put the lid on. I have found if you put the lid on, you get better light from the side because it's reflecting off the inside of the lid. But it's up to you if you want to use the lid or not. But that's how easy it is to make these luminaries with just a jar, an LED uh, candle, and just some leftover yarns. And again, you can make these in holiday colors, Christmas colors, winter colors, any colors that you want to, that you want to have a garden party, or a, a porch party, or any time you want to have a candle with a little bit of light, but no danger of burning anything down. <laughs> 